Okay, and just very quickly, for those of you who really want the extra challenge, there's another thing you can do, but you need some white glue, okay? And with your white glue, you want a piece, and let me just say, if you're at, working at home or maybe you have a table outside, that's a great place to work. If you're inside though, because it's a rainy day or it's kind of that rain sun, rain sun, you want to put some newspaper or old paper down when we get to the chalk part because it starts to get a little messy, which is super fun. Okay, but just, you know, sometimes you got to help with the cleanup, right? So we're going to take our white glue and give it a little shake and you might want to test it to see how it flows out. Oh, see how that's flowing nice? And I can actually draw with that. You see that? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move that aside. And this one, I'm just gonna, you know, see my viewfinder and maybe I'm gonna go for this part. And I am going to just paint with this glue, okay? Notice how I start, if you're doing a rose, because roses are kind of the major flower that comes out in June. You start with that spiral and make those C shapes to come out to make as many petals as you want on that rose. And remember, we're looking at the roses and learning how they look, but as an artist, we have artistic license. That means we get to create and co-create with what we see in our mind. You can be a Robert Bateman, Bateman and make it super, super precise if that's your style. Or you can be a little bit more painterly. And there's a great story. Maybe you have it in your library. It's called Ish. If it looks rose-ish, or flower-ish, then that's perfect. And there we go. So if you've done the glue method, now you need to walk away. Walk away. Leave it. Don't touch. Forget about it. Go outside and play. Go have a snack. Do something fun, read a story, and let it dry. Welcome back for this little portion of Blossoming June's art challenge, which is a little bit more challenging. So you saw before how I took the white glue and we painted with it the lines. And now you can see after it drying for overnight, what happens. To those lines is that they're a bit raised you can see them because they're shiny but they're clear so now we're going to fill this one in and we're going to do it a little bit different style for you folks out there who might be really adventurous and wanting to just put in whatever colors and not necessarily look at the flowers that you have or maybe you don't have some flowers and you just want to have fun and play which is awesome so let's see here so just once again taking those chalk pencils or chalk pastels and laying in some color maybe I want to put some purple in there Look how you can put colors on top of each other. It's kind of fun that way. And maybe I want to bring in some blue. I want to just be wild and free and make a blue rose. Wouldn't that be amazing? I 
and you could fill each section or you can leave it a little bit more painterly like this. And let's see what happens if we do something like, hmm, what do I want to choose? Yeah, let's experiment. What colors do I want to put on there? Mm -hmm. I want a red. Where is the red? Da, da, da. So who says leaves have to be green, right? So with blending, just a little notes, I think uh, putting the tissue paper on a on a pencil, on the end of a pencil to blend or using your finger. Or if you happen to have one of these or somebody in your family has one of these or you know where you can get one of these, these are called a blender. It's a blender tool they can get in an art store. So I just wanted to show you that artists use these kind of tools all the time when they work with chalk pastels. And so when you're working with lots of really bold color here, you know, you can decide whether you want to just leave it like that and have it very chalky or maybe you want to do a little bit of blending and softening. And remember, if you have chalk on the, on the tissue paper and you go somewhere else, it's going to add to that. So we're going to see what that looks like. So sometimes that can be really cool. It brings a color around to another spot. And if you find there's a lot of dust and you want to get rid of it, you can tilt it up like that. Okay, just when you're finished completely, take that outside and shake it out. It won't hurt anything out there. Okay, and I'm going to take my little blender tool for some of these areas that are a little bit hard to get into because of the way that glue dried, but it's kind of fun anyways and kind of gives you this impression of a really spiky little plant up here. And maybe I might just want to freeform and make this into more of a spiky little flower, you know, how sometimes things come out. And I created a little bit of a background back here, as if the flowers are on a table, maybe. I don't know. It just is what it is. It's an ish. And then in here, we'll see what happens when we blend a little bit of this yellow and blue together. Red. And so sometimes it can be like a real rubbing if that's how you want to blend and other times it could be a really light touch. Okay, so you can experiment and explore and you can do as many of these as, as, you, as you want. I mean, we were using black paper because it's very eye popping and makes the colors jump out at you. But if, if you have some other colored paper, like red or orange or whatever, white even, you can still play with all of that. Okay, well everybody, I think I might just put this up and see how it looks. Maybe play with it a little bit more later, but I think 
this is enough to show you the beginning and that I'm looking forward to having your art become part of the display. And we'll be most likely displaying this on Hornby. Right now I'm in my studio here on Denman, but all your work will be on Hornby and it'll be so lovely to see all the things that you create. So have a beautiful day, enjoy June, go smell the blossoms, always take time to smell.